presenting an unusual story of love and mystery on Front Page Detective. Starring Mr. Edmund Lowe as the famed newspaper columnist and amateur detective David Chase. And now for another thrilling adventure as we accompany David Chase and watch him match wits with those who would take the law into their own hands. Washington, D.C., after a two-week hunt for juicy political tidbits for my column, I knew how a senator must feel who has just been voted out of office. I was limp, tired, full of expensive information, and real glad to see the hometown again. They say that home is where your heart is, and my heart was certainly in the highlands of New York. Flight 33, now arriving from Jacksonville and Miami, unloading at gate 12. Well, I decided to go straight home to my typewriter, so that I could get all my notes in shape before I had to return to the daily grind of turning out a gossip column every 24 hours. You both look fine today. Hi, Hubert. Why, Mr. Chase, I thought you were in Washington. I was. How's the president? Oh, he... Any messages? Oh, yes. Uh, and by the way, there's been somebody trying to get you all morning. Mm-hmm. Male or female? The weaker sex. Doorbell, huh? No, your secretary's been strangely quiet all week. Good girl. You know, I told the lady you were out of town. If anyone else calls, tell them the same thing. I have a column to get out, and I don't want to be disturbed. Uh, oh, Mr. Chase, yeah. your mail. Save it. Save it? Mm-hmm. The more mail I don't read, the fewer letters I have to write. Catch? Yeah, I can't. I don't get it. Uh, Mr. Chase! Mr. Chase, this came to you this morning. Something special. Oh, how can I keep this desk in a neat condition with all this mail? Oh, we've got more stuff here all the time. Ooh. Hello. Mr. Chase, it seems to me the very least you can do... Dora Bell! When you get into town is to let your secretary know. Oh, how in the world did you... Or do you expect me to be a mind reader? I've been trying to... Now look, baby, I... Locate you all over the United States. Wait a minute. All I've been drawing is... Whoa, whoa there. Blanks from here to Washington. What's the... Whoa! Hello. Hello, Dora Bell, are you there? Yes. Now, look, I just came through the door this minute. Well, you could have called me from the airport. Well, yes, but I... Uh... Or you might even have stopped by the office. Now, listen, I... Or you could have wired me if you... David, don't go wiping your face with that nice, clean handkerchief. Yes, dear. Did you have a good time, Chief? Miss Hanson, for your information, I went to Washington on business. Oh, sure. Sure business. Tuesday night at the Café de Oro, Wednesday night at the Armitage, and by the way... David Chase, who was that blonde bomber you were seen with? Are you phoning me to heckle me? As a matter of fact, Mr. Chase, I'm calling you on business. After all, I'm still your secretary, aren't I? <laughs> I think so. What's the business? Well, there's a mug been trying to see you. Oh. I don't know, and a new one on me. What do you want? Wouldn't say, but I think you should see him. Now look, Miss Henson, just for the record, I've got a con to get out. If anyone should... Mr. Chase? David, what's the matter? Oh, excuse me. Uh, I think I've had some visitors. I'll call you back later. Well, 
Lieutenant Andrews, how did you get up? Sorry, Chase, it's my turn to ask the questions. Who is he? I don't know. I never saw him before in my life. Now, look, Chase, you'll make things up. No, wait, ju just a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with this. I told you once, I told you a hundred times, Dave. Don't fool around with wrong guys. I just walked in this room a few minutes ago. There's my suitcase. One of these tipsters of yours was bound to get you into trouble. Hey, look. How did you know enough to come up here? Well, I had a tip on the... I thought so. No, I don't think you had anything to do with it. But, Dave... Uh, yeah? Dave, I gotta ask you one thing. Please keep this thing out of your column until my boys have had a chance to look around a little, huh? <laughs> you old faker. <laughs> the coroner's report, Lieutenant. Okay. I just thought you might be interested in knowing who your boyfriend was. Give. Yeah. Joe Blake. Alias Pee Wee, Peanuts, Blakely, Blackstone. Small time hood. Associated with the numbers rackets. Bookmaking wire service. Arrested, uh... Did you find out what he was doing in my apartment? Uh-uh. He ain't talking. And according to the coroner's report, he ain't gonna do no talking. Who killed him? You might have some ideas about that. <laughs> You're still riding that horse, George. Get off it, will you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, boyfriend. But don't take no more bum tips, will you, Dave? <laughs> so long. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Yes? Angel put. Oh, what is this? Doesn't a working girl get an eight-hour day? <laughs> this is important. I want you to check something for me. Wait a minute. Okay, shoot. Joe Blake. B-L-A-K-E. I can spell, Mr. Chase. Anyone we know? That's what I want you to find out. Where he hangs his hat, who he plays around with. The full treatment, huh? That's right. What's the pitch? Oh, just a little skeleton in my closet. I'll call you back later. Okay, Chief. May we come in? How far? I hope you, uh, you will pardon this intrusion. Oh, I guess I have no choice. Smoke? No, thanks. You looking for something? Now that you mention it, yes. What's the matter? Didn't you find it the first time? I beg your pardon. You left one of your buddies behind. I don't know what you're talking about. As a matter of fact, we have come to do business with you, Mr. Chase. What kind of business? Oh, about $10,000 worth. $10,000? <laughs> That's a lot of cabbage. In anybody's language. What do you say, Mr. Chase? Who do you want me to kill? Oh, nothing like that. We attend to such matters ourselves. Like Joe Blake, huh? Who? I oh, never mind that. Uh, what am I supposed to do for that kind of money? Just hand over the book. The what? The little black book. Oh, now, wait a minute. It took me years to collect. That's it. From now on, I'm going to collect. You know, we don't seem to be talking about the same thing. Mr. Chase, please, your jokes are not in good taste. My friend is getting impatient. If you don't mind, the book. Here we go again. What book? Do you think we're stupid? Your column, October 9th. Attention, FBI. One little look in Baxter's black book <laughs> will tell you what makes the transcontinental wire service run. Oh, that. Now we're talking. I don't want anything about it. All right, Malone. Oh. Hold it. How about it, Chase? Have you had enough? What do you want me to do? The book. I don't suppose I carry you around with me, do you? Of course not. Well, I'll have to go and get it. Certainly. My friend will escort you. What assurance have I that you won't kill me after I turn it over to you? 
None. Except my word as a gentleman. <laughs> of course, that's different. I'll be waiting for you. At doorbell, what'd you find out? Joe Blake, age 31. Uh, skip the details. Give me the address. 743 East 61st Street. And you know something, boss? Never mind about that now. Find out where we got that squib on Baxter's little black book, which appeared in the... Uh... But that's what I'm trying to tell you. Joe Blake. What? Joe Blake is the one who sent it in. Good girl, thanks. Remind me to give you a gold star when I get back. Mr. Chase, what happened to you? The elevator got stuck. The elevator? Mm -hmm. Yeah, between the second and third floor. Oh, gosh, now I'll have to call the company. You better call the police. Yes, sir, the police. The police! beginning to feel like a bullseye with half a dozen sharpshooters trying to hit it. Things were coming my way without rhyme or reason. Why should everybody be coming to me looking for a little black book? The only one I've got took me years to fill up and cost me a fortune. I can't see how it would be so valuable to a bunch of hoodlums. I can only hope I'd pick up something that would rhyme with reason at Joe Blake's place. How do you do? Are you Mrs. Blake? Well, who wants her? I'd like to talk to her, please. Who are you? My name is Chase. I don't know you. You will. Look, you have no right to bust in here. People have a right to their privacy. What do you want? Some information. How long have you lived here? Uh, just in case. Uh, these things make me nervous hanging around. Uh, people never seem to know when they're loaded. They're always going off. Look, if you're a copper, you might as well know you're wasting your time. What do you know about Mr. Baxter? I don't know anything. Uh-uh. You know what happens to little girls who... Leave me alone. Now, look, Mrs. Blake. My name is David Chase. I write a column of the Star Bulletin. Something's come up that concerns you. What? When did you see your husband last? Now, look, Mrs. Blake, I'm trying to help you. Well, he hasn't been home in two days. I warned him. About what? He'll kill him. Here. Now, suppose you tell me all about it, huh? Well, Joey worked for a fellow on the west side. Sort of like a clerk, taking bets, making deliveries. Mm, general handyman. He was a small-time punk. Well, anyway, one day he had to make a delivery to Mr. Big. And that would be Baxter, I suppose. Yeah. The next thing I know, he's got a little black book. A book? Now you're making sense, Mrs. Blake. What was in it? Baxter's whole setup. The name and address of every bookie joint he controls in the country. Joey said he found it in Mr. Big's office. Well, Baxter wasn't looking. I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Tried to make him get rid of it, but he wouldn't even listen to me. Said he was going to make a fortune with it. Blackmail? Oh, I don't know. 
I guess he was either going to sell it back to the boss or, or else maybe to Keeley's outfit. Keeley? Well, that's the opposition. Well, well, what happened? Well, he began following him. Day and night. I begged Joey to lay off, but he wouldn't, wouldn't even listen to me. He was going to play it smart. Did he? Well, that's when he wrote to you. That stuff you ran in your column. I see. He said that it softened Baxter up. Yeah, like a hunk of granite. That was, that was early in October. Pretty soon things started getting worse. They searched the place here a couple of times. Yeah, and, and Joe was too smart to leave it on the premises. Well, Joe was getting plenty worried. The book was too hot to handle. The last time they were here, they, they beat him up something terrible. I see. Well, what happened to the book? Well, you've got it. I've got it. And if you've got any sense, Mr. Chase, you'll give it back to Baxter. He's got plenty of sense. Haven't you, Mr. Chase? Baxter. But won't do you any good, Josephine. I watched Mr. Chase take the bullets out. I'm much obliged, Mr. Chase. That was a very touching story you told, Josephine. <gasps> Next time, Josephine, don't talk so much. You know, Mr. Chase, I've always wanted to meet you. I'm an avid reader of your column. I admire your style. But I can't say the same for yours. <sighs> That's neither here nor there. But I really must insist on the book. It's mine, you know. It's in my apartment. Well, what are we waiting for? Up on your feet, sister. Come on. Over there. You too, Mr. Chase. What are you going to do? We'll see. In you go. Come on. I hope she doesn't suffer from claustrophobia. Your concern moves me. Well, let's see you move, then. And uh, I might warn you, Mr. Chase, I have an awfully nervous trigger finger. I wouldn't try anything if I were you. I'll get it. You mind if I get my hat? <sighs> Certainly. Thanks. Do you know where Dave Chase is? No, Lieutenant Andrews. I tell you, I don't know where he is. Now, look, young lady. I'll book you for perjury, accessory before the fact, and disturbing the peace. My peace! Jack's in the closet, if that's what you're wondering. But well, where are you going? Well, you go home, little girl. There's still a chance I might be able to help Mr. Chase. There are more comfortable ways to travel through the city than in a taxi when you feel the hard muzzle of a gun every time the cab hits a bump. I didn't know how long I could stall Baxter about the book, but I intended to keep stalling as long as possible and wait for the brakes. Mr. Chase, I, I want to give you this and all, all your mail. Oh, darn it. He never wants his mail. Oh, shut up. Columnists make poor obituaries. Okay, Chase, let's have it. Wait a minute. Where are you going? To get the black book. You know it's not in there. You want the book, don't you? 
There's nothing in that closet. Oh, you never can tell what might turn up in a closet. You surprised Blake's not in there? He left a little while ago. You're a liar. Of course I'm a liar. You knew that Blake couldn't leave that closet unless he was carried out. What are you talking about? You killed Joe Blake. Don't bet on horses, Chase. You're a bad guesser. No, I'm not guessing. You were awfully sure there'd be no little black book in that closet. How come? Stop playing games. You killed Blake, shoved his body in that closet, and then phoned the police. You knew what was in that closet, all right. And it wasn't a black book. You know, Mr. Chase, I'm going to miss reading your column unless you hand over the book right now. Let's have it. This is going to surprise you, Baxter, but I haven't the faintest idea where that black book of yours is. What? Go to the door. See who it is. Watch your step. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Chase. I don't wish to appear persistent, but uh, excuse me. Very glad to see you, Hubert. Oh, I'm glad to see you, too. Well, as I was saying, Mr. Chase, there, there's simply no room in my little cubicles downstairs for all your mail. But what if all my tenants wanted me to hold their mail? Gosh, I, I wouldn't have any room for, for anything. So I just thought I was going off duty. I'd bring them up. And I'm sure you'll find everything in good order. Your, your messages and your, and your packages and, and, well, everything that's there. So, good night. Good night, Hubert. Oh, gosh. Gee, I just thought of this. Your little black book. A special messenger delivered it to me last night. So, so there. Well, as I always say, render unto Caesar what's Caesar. So I, I brought everything up. So I hope I did right by bringing it up. Oh, you did fine, Hubert. Fine. Well, I'm glad that you feel that way. So I hope I didn't intrude. Not at all. Good, Good night. night. Good night, Hubert. Good night, Mr. Chase. Thank you, Mr. Chase. And now... Drop it. Put them out, both of you. Good work, Keeley. Take it easy, Keeley. We can work on this together. Work together? You make me laugh. With this, I can wipe you out. We'll amalgamate. <laughs> Are you kidding? Don't take any chances, Keeley. Don't be a sucker. This man has a murder rap hanging over him. The police will take care of him. You know, maybe you have something there. That's a good idea, boys. Let the police handle it. Study, Dave. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. Huh. What is this, old home week? There. What is it? The reason Blake was killed. What? There's a list of all the books operated by the Transcontinental. Enough to keep the Vice Squad busy for a year. And you can book Baxter for Blake's murder. Say, how did you happen to come up here, anyway? You can thank Mrs. Blake for that. Mrs. Blake? Good grief, I almost forgot... Well, Mrs. Blake, I'm I'm terribly sorry about your husband. Well, it was it was bound to happen. Tell me, uh, how did you happen to get it? Yes. How did you manage to get out? Your secretary. Dorabelle. Yes, she oh. got worried when you didn't call back, so came rushing over. Good gal. Okay, you mugs, come on. I got a whole honor guard waiting for you downstairs. Stop in at headquarters if you got a chance, will you, Dave? Maybe you'll be able to fill me in on the details. Sure thing. My sympathy, Mrs. Blake. Okay. Well, you better go with the lieutenant, too, Mrs. Blake. And thank you very much for your cooperation. Goodbye, Mr. Chase. Goodbye. Hello? Mr. Chase, are you all right? Dora Bell, of course I'm all right. Where are you? Where do you think I am? One guess. All right. One guess, Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> At the office, working overtime. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Chase. As usual, Mr. Chase. Good night. Good night. That's what I like about a secretary. Always on the job. In tonight's cast, Mr. Edmund Lowe starred as David Chase, famous newspaper columnist and amateur detective. The role of 
Josephine Blake was portrayed by Gene Willis. James Craven played the part of Baxter. Eddie Foster enacted the role of Mr. Keeley. Pamela Duncan was seen as Dorabel. Lieutenant Andrews was played by George Pembroke. Knuckles Malone was enacted by Dick Rich. And Joe Besser played the part of Hubert. For another exciting mystery, read Front Page Detective magazine. And tune in next week, same time, same station, for another thrilling episode of Front Page Detective on television. You're invited to be with David Chase as he again unravels a case of mystery and intrigue on Front Page Detective.